Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting windowsill teapot <laughs> and I'm sipping on some wild berry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks like this one <laughs> so this is part of a new uh, exclusive benefit that I have for my patreons that I like to call paint my photo so my patreons get the opportunity to submit their own personal photographs for me to turn into video tutorials, which is great because it gets them an opportunity to learn how to paint their own photo and it gives everybody else an opportunity to enjoy their beautiful photo in a painting way and be able to paint it as well. So this, uh, not only in my Patreon membership program is this one of the benefits, but I also have a whole bunch of other painting benefits for you to enjoy as well. So if you're interested in learning about how to submit your photo or more about the Patreon membership program, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, green oxide, chrome yellow, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, Mars black, and burnt umber, which I likely will call brown. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to. For my uh, tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'm going to be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush. And I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. Uh, let's see, if you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same types of paints and brushes. That's there, but there's that link also will take you to my shop where you can purchase things like my brushes individually as well. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be painting a background onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my medium brush to pre-mix a couple of custom colors. The colors that I'm gonna be using for this step are white, brown, and yellow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a tan type of a color for the top and a very, very pale gray for the bottom, and we'll be painting a gradient for the base coat. So I have pre-mixed my colors already, which you can see down on my palette here. This is gonna be my tan color. This is gonna be my light gray. So how I got to this is I mixed brown and yellow, which is gonna give me like a gold, a metallic gold type of a color. And then I added white to that. So I mix my brown and my yellow and then just add a little bit of white at a time because the white can really take over and make it really really light a little bit too fast that's a little too yellow for me so i'm going to add a touch more brown into it and you can test it out you can make it whatever you know shade of tan that you want this is uh representational of the photograph that i'm going off of so i'm, I'm that's what's steering my color choices in through here so that's pretty good i'm going to wash and dry my mixing tool and then I'm gonna mix myself my custom gray, which is right here. How I got to this, oh, I, we need to use black too in this stuff. <laughs> How I got to this was mostly white 
and a teeny tiny touch of black paint, very little bit. I just want this a little, maybe a shade darker than white. So this is the shade of gray that I'm going for. Once you've got your two colors on there, you can put your mixing tool away. I'm taking out my large bristle brush. I'm gonna pick up my custom tan color and I'm going to be applying it with a left to right brush stroke at the top. And then once I get about, I would say about a quarter of the way, third to a quarter of the way down my canvas, I'm gonna start incorporating the light gray so I can have a gradient coming down my canvas. So uh, that's the tan. Now I'm gonna pick up some of my light gray with my tan on my, on my brush at the same time. So they're gonna mix in with one another and create this gradient of sorts, which is gonna mean it's gonna go from gradually from one color to another color. So now I'm just going to pick up my gray as I go down the canvas. And this is going to provide a great backdrop for the stucco type of finish that we're going to be putting on the building. So as you're doing these type of um, designs or you're looking to incorporate a certain type of texture within your painting, I like to kind of look at a little bit darker of a tone in that main block in type of a section in order to utilize these darker type of shades within that texture that I'm gonna be using. Oops, I just picked up a little bit of extra black. Interesting, that'll work in just fine. <laughs> um, these tones that I'm putting in are in essence kind of the darker tones of this wall or this exterior stucco that we're creating. So, and by doing this gradient on the, um, the reference that I'm using, it looks like the top of the building is kind of under the shadow of an overhang of sorts. So that's what's gonna be emulated at the top of the canvas. And then once I've got it all the way down to the bottom, I'm just gonna kind of go uh, with a long broad stroke across left to right. This will help me to kind of blend it maybe a little bit more, maybe catch any spots that I might have missed or um, kind of just give myself a little bit softer of a look. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using my piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, you are my, my drawing utensil, which for me is a pencil today, I guess. <laughs> so once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away take out a drawing utensil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our window. I'm gonna be using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you'd like, and I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and we're gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a nice, simple, basic shape that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So for the markers that I'm gonna um, start you off with, is we're gonna start off with two up on the upper portion of the canvas. So I'm gonna find myself about the center of the top of my canvas. So for me, that's somewhere about here. I'm gonna come down about two, two and a half inches. And then from here, I'm gonna go about halfway between the center and the edge of my canvas, so about four inches, make myself my first mark. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, make myself another mark. And then I can just connect these two with a semi-horizontal line. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna be painting over it. And this is a bumpy stucco building, so it's okay if it's bumpy. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay that same kind of four inches away from the edge of the canvas. And I'm gonna come down until I'm about six, six and a half inches from the bottom of my canvas. So this is gonna be my next marker. And to know if, to just kind of ensure that you're the same distance away from the edge of the canvas, because you might not put yours in exactly the same spot as mine, you can always use your pencil or a paintbrush or something to measure how far over you did that one, and then just kind of come down to the bottom and make sure that you've done it about the same distance. And same thing with over here. So I can take this, measure it like that, and then come down here, give myself another marker at about the same height as that one. So something like that. Now what I'm gonna do from these two markers, I'm gonna make two diagonal lines going in. So about, I would say a half of an inch like that, and like that. 
Now I'm going to connect these two corners to these two corners. So this is a stucco building. It's all bumpy along this window. So that's why it kind of kicked in a little bit down towards the bottom. So I'm going to just kind of go pretty straight like this, maybe a couple little bumps here and there, and then just kind of slowly bring it into that corner like that and do the same thing over on this side. And you can certainly make little additional bumps, like a little more stuccoy kind of stuff. And again, as I come down towards this bottom, just bring it in towards that little marker. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from here, this inside corner, I would say about an inch, just give myself a little bit of a marker and do the same thing down here. Maybe about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in, this, in that area, somewhere like that. I'm going to create the corner of the windowsill. So from here, I'm going to go horizontally, vertically, and then horizontally to meet that. We can make these look fancier and have a um, little bit more kind of character to them in a little bit, but I'm just going to give myself a nice basic shape. So I've got my diagonal, kind of horizontal, um, vertical, and then like this. And now I'm just going to connect here to here. So now that I've got those two corners basic in basic shapes like that, if you wanted to, you could certainly kind of fancy this up a little bit. You could make little bumps and stuff like that, but it's one of the sides of this um, little edge it has like this little chip in it, something like this, but those are not necessary. If you want to do, you know, hyper realism, you can certainly incorporate that kind of stuff, but it's not super necessary. Once you've got this done, we are going to be using our large brush and our medium brush for the next step. So you can make any adjustments you want, put down your drawing utensil, get out the other two brushes and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting a base coat for the window. I'm gonna be using my large and my medium brush to paint. I'm gonna use my medium brush to create a custom color, which is gonna be dark gray. So I'm gonna use this dark gray and that's gonna be made with black and white. I'm gonna use this dark gray as the base for the windowsill, the inside of the house or the room, as well as the colored part around the window. So like the um, decorative colored part around the window. So you can certainly build this piece by piece, but for me, it's really easiest to kind of build a base color and then build my objects on top of it. So that's where I'm starting with my dark gray here. So I have created a custom color on my palette. How I got to this color is just black and white. So a lot of black, a uh, little bit of white, and just mix it together so you have a nice uh, medium to dark type of gray. And what I'll do is I'm gonna use this medium brush for the smaller areas. So I can take my medium brush and just get these little areas that I think are, would be a little bit more difficult to get with my big brush. So I can just kind of go around these corners. And I, don't, I know that I don't need to get it perfect at this point because I've got a lot of painting to do. So this is really just something that's going to give me my base coat on, um, on this particular object where I can build all of my other details off of it. And then I'm going to use my this brush up in these little corners. And then once I've got and if you need the, to use the little brush for the whole thing, feel free to do so or this medium brush. But I'm feeling now I can switch to my larger brush and then just kind of give myself a nice big base coat within this window area. And again, for me, knowing um, that I was gonna be doing this base coat in this area, I did that background so with the gradient first, so it was easier for me to um, create a cohesive gradient on the left and the right of this window. So you could have put, um, you know, sectioned out this window first and then painted that base coat for the wall second. Um, however, or, you know, just done them in, con in conjunction with one another. However, it might have been difficult to get one side to look similar to the other with that gradient. So that's just, you know, one of those painting techniques that some people like to do it my way, some people like to do it the other way. Um, 
the other way would probably save you paint, <laughs> but this way saves you time. So whatever is more important to you is the way that you go. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using our um, medium brush, definitely, and maybe this large brush as well for the next step. So you can wash them both and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be finishing the stucco. I'm going to be using my large and my medium brush to do this. The colors that I'm going to use are white, tan, light gray, and dark gray. And if I use any other colors, like maybe brown, I will let you know. But I'm not sure I'm going to use brown yet. So what I'm going to do is I want my window to look like it is set in, in the building. So I want to have a little bit of an inset. So I'm going to be creating on the outside of this gray area. I'm going to be creating about a half of an inch worth of um, a, a depression in the building. We'll do that. And we'll also be adding a second layer onto the stucco with little cracks and bumps and stuff. So I'm going to be using both um, brushes. I'm also going to put a shadow underneath the windowsill. So what I'm going to first do is kind of lay out that inset in the building. I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm going to um, pick up a little bit of my um, tan and my dark gray. So tan and just a tiny touch of the dark gray on my brush. I just need this to um, give me a little bit darker version. I'm going to come out from the corner in through here, just give myself kind of a little diagonal of sorts and same thing right in through here. That just kind of tells me about th that it's coming out towards the viewer. And then down in these little corners in through here, I just want to kind of give myself a little barrier as to where the edge of the outside of the wall kind of dips into um, the rest of it. So something maybe somewhere in through here. So now that I've got those two little markers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up um, a little bit of my tan and my light gray. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of keep flipping back between these colors to give myself a good um, color variation what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of rub this down the side in a um, kind of a messy type of a way in order to give myself this um, bumpy type of a texture. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my dark gray plus a touch of water on my brush as I'm coming down into here. A little bit more water on my brush. I'm really just kind of looking to give myself this um, illusion of the inside of the wall, something like that, where it insets into the building. So I don't need to do much, just a little, little hint of it in through there, maybe a little bit more of the dark gray as I just kind of want to make sure that I can see this. And it's going to um, meld into the side of the building, but first I just want to get that on there. So a little bit of my dark gray plus my um, tan up at the top. I'm going to put a little area up in through there. And I keep kind of um, putting a touch of water on my brush in order to get this to um, spread out so I don't need a ton of paint. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light gray right now just to give myself some little bumpy textures in through there. And then I'm going to just bring this down this side into here with a little bit more water on my brush and again just this you'll see how this makes a difference in a minute when I when I add the side stucco onto the building and right now I'm just using the remnants on my brush to get this little darker area in through here but again it was a combination of my dark gray my light gray and that tan color that helped me through that step maybe a little bit more of my dark gray just to give myself maybe a couple of little creases and stuff in there. So now that I've got that on there, I just kind of am putting little little marks in in between to maybe look like little bumps and stuff. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in place some little cracks and bumps in the stucco. Up towards the top, I'll be doing it with my dark gray and my tan. And as I transition down um, into this area in through here, I'm probably just going to be using, I might just actually use um, my light gray and my dark gray, a combination of those two, just to give myself a couple of little darker marks. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to pick up tan and my dark gray up at the top. 
And really what I'm doing is I'm just trying to uh, give the illusion of some little bumps and cracks, but you don't necessarily want them to just look like squiggles. So once you've got an area on there, you can kind of just, with a little bit of water on your brush, you can um, kind of spread it out. So you have uh, uh, almost like an indent in that stucco. So it's not necessarily a full on line, um, but it resembles more of a little bit of an indent. So you can do little kind of marks as, as much as you want. I'm doing more kind of up towards the top because the um, photo reference that I'm, I'm using has it a little bit darker up at the top just to um, because it's under that canopy of, I think there's like an overhang or something. So I'm just kind of adding these little marks. I'm using this brush to do this when I go to kind of finesse the stucco itself. I'll use my larger brush, but right now I'm just gonna use my, my medium brush plus a um, little bit of water on my brush to give myself just, you know, some arbitrary little marks. And again, if you feel like you're, you're going through this and, and it, it's, um, you know, you're doing too much, just wash that brush off and put a little bit of water on it. And that water will help you to kind of mute those marks and get them to look a little bit more natural. You just, when I'm doing these type of effects, I'm really not wanting, um, it to look super perfect. I, I, I just want it to look like these are parts of the building. This is, you know, this, this building was built, who knows, hundreds of years ago. Maybe it, you know, it was built by somebody's hand and, you know, they just wanted to make sure that the stucco kept the building warm and they weren't concerned about it getting totally perfect. I just picked up some light gray if you're wondering what happened there. And then as I'm working my way down into this region, I am going to be picking up um, more of my light gray, but that's kind of trying to get a little bit everywhere. Um, over on this side, again, light gray. I think I'm gonna pick up light gray plus a touch of dark gray as I go down into this direction over in through here. And again, you'll see when I start to um, use my larger brush to get these to um, make sense and to uh, work well with that background that I did, it'll, it'll blend a lot nicer. And another trick is to just try not to be super consistent with it. So if you did a mark like that, don't put another one exactly like it right underneath. You know, come to the side and maybe put a little bump over there or a little squiggle. Make the marks look different from one another and that'll make it look more natural. And again, these are just, I'm just going for some some kind of carefree depressions, maybe in the in the surface. I'll put some um, some areas that look like they pop out in a minute, but this is this is looking pretty good to me for that. Down at the bottom, I'm gonna use um, my gray plus a touch of my dark gray and water. The um, the the bottom here is gonna be hidden a lot with um, the. Uh, foliage that's down at the bottom so I'm not terribly concerned about making it perfect but again I'm just looking to get some light or some dark marks right now that I can um, make look more like stucco so that's looking pretty good so I'm going to switch or actually let me put my shadow mm, no I'm going to switch to my large brush I'll put my shadow on underneath there in a minute so now as I as I go through and kind of finesse this a little bit I'm, I'm looking to use my larger brush. I'm gonna be using kind of a softer brush stroke um, and different tones. So I'll use a little bit, maybe I'll use my light gray and my tan up as I travel up to get those to intermingle with each other. So I'm still gonna use those same colors. I'm gonna start with my tan and a touch of light gray on my brush. So let's say for instance over here, I can take this and kind of just soften that stucco a little bit with, you could use circular brush strokes, you could you know, use a variety of different brush strokes that are comfortable for you, but I'm really just looking to um, get it to look like these kind of belong together and that they, um, are just soft stucco <laughs> that has been made with with you know um, a cement type of of material and as I'm coming down here I will get lighter and lighter in a minute but I'm gonna 
I guess I'm gonna work up top first. <laughs> and if you're if you're going about this and you're saying, oh, it just doesn't really look like, um, you know, I'm I thought it would look. You could certainly play with your different colors, allow it to, um, you know, maybe maybe your tones are not where you want them to be. Maybe you want yours to look a little bit more tan as opposed to this golden type of a color that I'm using. So as you go through your process, if you feel that you want to switch it up a little bit, feel free to do so. And then as this little corner in through here, this isn't getting a lot of um, detail to it because it doesn't really need to. It's just a little kind of illusion that we're kind of creating in through here. I just added a little bit of highlight in order to get that little piece to pop out just a little bit more. And then again, over um, here, I'm just really looking to make sure that I have a second coat on the entire surface, as well as giving it a little bit of this um, stucco type of appearance to it. The light gray is definitely helping me give a couple of different tones of this um, tan as I'm working my way um, under that uh, canopy of the of whatever the building is above this. And I'm getting, you could certainly make it darker if you wanted to or lighter, whatever is working for you. You can dull down some of those little marks that you made. You could make more marks. You know, it's going to be a, you know, a visual preference. I think I am, I'm, no, actually I'm going to go into my gray, my dark gray. I felt like I want a little bit darker up into here. I was going to bring in the brown, but I feel like the, the gray will work out just fine for me. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to move down to, I need this a little bit darker too. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that um, gray just to identify this corner a little bit more so it sinks in. And again, um, maybe a little bit light gray too. <laughs> We're going to have that windowsill is going to be of a different color too in a little bit. So you can uh, certainly play with that a little bit if you want to. And then as I move down into this area, I'm gonna be picking up white. So I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up white paint as I work my way down these sides. So this way, this is gonna show, I think I actually need to wash my brush as I just marked there, it's gonna to be too dark. So I'm washing my brush <laughs> and I'm picking up some more white paint. As I'm working my way down these sides, I really want there to look like there's a lot of sunshine and stuff on here. So I'm using this white to uh, carry some brightness into these areas. And you can see, I'm just kind of rubbing that paint in. I don't need it to do anything super difficult. I'm just looking to um, make the edge of the building look a little bit brighter than this inset in through here. And you might want your stucco to look really smooth. So as you're going through this process, if you're finding that it's looking too rough or you want to add more dimension to it, you could certainly smooth it out or you could add more cracks to it. You know, you can really play with it. These are fun um, exercises on stuff like this when you're trying to create texture. It's really fun to start playing with different brushes and seeing what is visually appealing to you. And you can see right now I'm just kind of going for a light, light tone down in through here. Again, I know that down here is going to be um, hidden with a lot of flowers so or uh, plants, so I'm not concerned about that. I'm putting, I'm going to put a shadow right underneath that windowsill as well. That's looking pretty good. Maybe just a little, little extra lightness as that's coming up in through there. And then some more lightness over here on this right side. So just more white on my brush. And again, when I add that shadow underneath the building and then all the dimension that we're going to be adding to the window itself, this is going to look fabulous. <laughs> it's going to give you lots of, lots of dimension in this this um, stucco. And again, you can pull some of these lighter pieces up in through here. I'm gonna have some right on the edge of this wall as it kind of turns into that little inset. And again, if you put too much lightness to it, you could certainly bring back some of that original gray. All of this I'm not really concerned about, so because I'm gonna have those plants in there. So now I'm gonna pick up some of my tan and maybe uh, I'm going to start with just uh, tan and a little bit of my dark gray. I'm going to put a shadow right underneath um, 
the windowsill in through here. So this is tan plus my dark gray and whatever remnants were on my brush. So this is just gonna give me this beautiful shadow that is going to color coordinate with the shadowy part of the building up top. So again, just keeping those colors harmonized will help to make this look more realistic as well. Maybe just a little bit more of my um, dark gray over here in this corner. Oops, my, my canvas is like, I just wanna wheel around today. <laughs> Apparently I'm painting very aggressively with my brush today. <laughs> and then just bringing this down in through here, maybe pulling this out in this direction. And then we're gonna be using, let's see, what are we gonna use for the next step? We're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want to. And then we can, you can put this large brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our window frame and our foliage. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are green, black, white, tan, and light gray. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be putting in my window frame and with just a base tone of like a, a beige type of a color. And then I'm going to be putting in my base coat for my foliage with a dark grayish or dark green type of a color. I'm gonna do my window frame first. You could certainly draw this out if you want to. Again, this is a really old style window. Doesn't need to be perfect. I'm gonna give you some markers and we're gonna connect those markers with our custom color. So I have made a custom color on my palette here. This is, I'm gonna call this beige. And how I got to this color was, I used my tan, I used my light gray, and I used a touch of white just to make sure that it was um, as light as I wanted it to be. So you can see as I have it sitting next to my tan color, how much lighter it is. It doesn't have to go um, a, a terribly lighter. You don't necessarily want it to go to white, but I'm, I'm gonna add some shadows and highlights and stuff to it, but I just wanted to start with kind of a mid-tone for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from the top of here, I would say about an inch. My um, window frame is gonna be maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch thick or wide. This is gonna come all the way over to maybe about oh, a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch away from there, as well as um, same thing over on this right hand side. So now that I know how high it is and how wide it is, I can just kind of connect these. For me, I can kind of push my brush firm and that's gonna give me a pretty symmetrical uh, width as I go through that line. You could certainly, you know, um, you could use a bright brush or a flat brush or whatever brush kind of works for you. You could draw it out. You could do all kinds of different um, techniques to get it the way that you want. That's how I'm gonna do mine. And then I'm gonna come down to, um, I'm gonna come down to about mm, right, right, right in through here. This is gonna, right, like a little bit higher. My corners don't seem to be totally matched up um, because my building is a little rickety, but I'm gonna go kind of somewhere in through there and in through here is gonna be my, my corners to the frame in through there. And then I just can connect here to here. I'm gonna do, do that kind of going down here. And you could also, I have a super shaky hand, so I rest my hand on my canvas um, I'm just gonna kind of go down. I think I wanna push my brush a little bit harder so I don't have to do this too many passes. And again, because I'm pushing my brush pretty consistently firm, I'm getting a pretty consistent width with my line. And then I just can kind of ride that down. You can put a tiny bit of moisture on your brush too if it's not filling in those little holes the way that you want it to, the little holes in the canvas, or just put more paint on your brush. So that's looking good there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, taking this from here and just pushing my brush pretty, pretty firm. I keep my eye on the prize, which is the other marker. Just 
ride it right down there. Well, that one wasn't straight at all. <laughs> it's all right. Nothing, nothing a, a little rickety old window can't hide. We'll disguise it with all kinds of shadows and highlights and chipped paint and all that good stuff. So something like that. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to make this um, taller. So if this is going to be kind of the bottom of it, I'm going to go up about an inch, inch and a half. So this is much wider because it's going to show the bottom of the window itself and then part of the frame. So it's got a, for, um, the photo reference had it at a pretty big thickness down at the bottom. So I'm just trying to emulate that. So like that. And then I'm going to bring this corner to over here. And then I'm just going to paint this whole midsection in with this color. And this painting is super fun because you could certainly change up the um, color of the building, the color of the, the window frame, the I'm going to be doing um, some plants down at the bottom, but you could do flowers. You could There's a teapot that's going to be sitting on this windowsill. You could do a, a vase full of flowers. You could do a basket full of vegetables. You could do anything that you want. It's a really fun one. So I'm going to go about halfway between here and here, give myself a marker right in through here. And to know how far down this is or to keep it symmetrical on the other side, again, you could kind of use your brush or any, oops, use your brush or anything um, that will help you to kind of measure how far down you did and do the same thing on the other side and that, and then just connect your dots. So that way you'll have it pretty um, level where it's not tipping too much along the way and then just kind of smooth it out to the best of your ability. And again, we're gonna have, we got curtains coming We've got the pot coming, the teapot coming. So that's that. And I'm going to do one going down the center as well. So again, just about halfway between here and here, somewhere in this vicinity. And then I'm going to do this so I can make sure that I get it where I want it or close enough, something like that. And then just connect my dots. I should have done the middle one too, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll be... We'll be hiding it and that'll be just fine. And then of course, this is just the first coat of this too. So we've got, again, the details that are gonna go inside the window, the pot and all that good stuff. Just getting a idea of where this is headed. So that's good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make my custom color for my uh, foliage. So I'm washing dry my brush. I have pre-mixed it on my palette here. This is my, we're gonna call this just a dark green color. How I got to this was I used green oxide and black and a little bit of white. So the black and the white is in essence desaturating or taking some of that green out of the green <laughs> and making it a little bit duller. So that's a little bit too light. I'm gonna add more green and a little bit more black. I added a touch too much white to my mixture as I was mixing it. There we go, that's pretty good. So once I've got my kind of soft dark green, I'm gonna lay out where I want my foliage to go. I've got different kinds of foliage. I've got kind of like um, two, two different kinds. I've got one darker kind in the back and then a lighter kind in the front. So I'm going to lay out all the dark kinds and then um, as we do our details we'll have, we'll, we'll put the lighter ones in place. So I'm going to start over here. I'm just going to give myself um, a, a nice loose representation of what I see in the picture and the type of foliage that I'm seeing is kind of these long um, branch type things and then they have these little tiny, um, almost like diamond type of shape um, leaves coming off of them. You don't have to do it all, every single leaf representational, but if you can, if you're trying to emulate a photograph and you're seeing some kind of characteristic that is um, easy to kind of emulate to give it a, um, a likeness to that photograph, then then do it. You know, I've got, um, I'm going to do some of these 
ones that are on the edge that are, are really um, visible in the uh, profile of this greenery area. And then once I've got the edge pieces in, I can um, kind of freestyle a lot of the mat, the larger mass areas that I'm seeing. So I've got a big one kind of coming up in through here with a couple of little branches. And again, I'm emulating what I'm seeing in a, in a photograph. So I'm just taking some of those characteristics that I can uh, easily kind of process in a, in a step by step type of way in order to give it again, just looking for a, a similar type of likeness um, to that to that photograph. So I've got kind of a big area in through here. I've got one kind of coming up in through here. And then again, we'll be adding a whole bunch of other details to this later on, but this will definitely get us started. This is a little kind of fun little section in through here. It just kind of comes down into the side of the building. And then there's this little piece over in through here. And again, don't as if you if you're following photographs don't put the pressure on yourself especially when it comes to um, emulating foliage don't put the pressure on yourself that everything has to be exactly you have to have every single leaf exactly where it is in the photograph that's you you drive yourself bonkers if you try to do that so just be loose let, uh, let happen what's going to happen as you're going through your process. That's looking pretty good to me for um, the loose representation of the um, exterior pieces. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, start to incorporate. I'm going with a little bit more uh, black as with this green as I come down kind of into this vicinity so I can get some deeper tones as I'm coming down here. But right now I'm just going to start tapping my brush in order to um, get myself just filling in this solid mass area down in through here like this and then we'll be adding more details to it later but this is again just going to get it started so we have that base to to work from during um during the detail type of process over in through here i feel like i definitely need some dark stuff um to uh, to anchor this section in through here. So I'm still with my dark green and, and a touch of black, just a teeny tiny touch of black, um, but I'm gonna start adding maybe just a little bit more green oxide also, um, because down in through here is where we're gonna have a different type of um, leaf or a different type of foliage kind of projecting itself. Um, but I, de I definitely still need some dark spots. So again, I'm still working with my, my green, my dark green and my black right now, just giving myself some, some dark spots in through there. Now I'm gonna pick up green oxide on my brush. You're gonna start to see that, that shift in color, just so we have some areas with a little bit lighter of a base as we um, build our way towards uh, those brighter sections. And again, I'm not doing any fancy brush stroke right now, just kind of wiggling my brush a little in order to get these, uh, these mass areas in through here. And then once I've got this done, we're gonna be using our uh, small brush for the next step. So you can have to get, and again, I'm just green oxide right now, but once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out a small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the window. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are probably all of them. I'm gonna definitely use uh, black, gray, my dark gray, white, um, and burnt sienna, and maybe some brown, <laughs> and maybe some of my tan color, my tan or my beige. I'll call them out as I as I use them. There's just a lot of um, kind of, oh, and green too, <laughs> my dark green color. Uh, there's a lot of little nuances in this window that are gonna make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, 
So as I go through this, I'm going to be using a lot of the colors that are in the atmosphere because it could be uh, reflecting things, especially in this top window. And then there's a curtain. So I'm going to be using lots of different details on that. And the, uh, the sill itself has some dirt and some leaves. So it's going to be a lot of little stuff we're going to do. So I'm going to use my small brush. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit my a green paint job <laughs> on this um, exterior gray area because the um, the photo reference has it as like this really dark dark green and I think it complements the foliage really well so I'm going to use a little bit of my dark green my custom that I created and I'm not going to uh, put it on perfect I'm just kind of rubbing it on so this way this is going to give it almost that like um, rustic kind of painted old chipped paint kind of look to it it's going to get a little bit darker as it dries because I have that dark base underneath it but if you wanted yours to be even darker you could certainly add a little bit of black to it like I might add a little bit of black and maybe a little burnt sienna up at the top um, so it looks like it's under shadowed underneath that underhang a little bit so again, this is just a little bit of that custom dark green that I created. And you can certainly clean up these edges to, well, clean them up, but make them a little bit more, um, like I had an unfinished paint spot in through here. So I'm just bringing out some of that green just to make it look like it is all the way to that wall without any um, missed spots. So, and again, I'm making it kind of rough looking. So it looks like that stucco is, um, got bumps and stuff on it. So that's the beauty of these little details. Even when you don't, um, you, again, you don't have to follow that photograph perfectly, but if you can, if you can visually kind of detect some of those neat little nuances, and again, if you don't do them exactly, that's fine, but you can emulate just that type of um, effect. So I'm not making this look exactly every single bump exactly as the photograph, but the photograph has some bumpy stuff to it. So if I can um, emulate that, it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Up at the top, I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna, black, and that dark green in order to give this a little bit different of a tone up in through here. So it looks like it's kind of being shadowed underneath that underhang. And again, just a little effect that would go a long way. And again, dark green, black, maybe a little bit of water on my brush because I have a good base with that dark gray already. So I don't need to really paint this thing over 100%. I really am just using these additional colors to enhance that, um, that effect. So again, just maybe, I was probably a little aggressive on the burnt sienna, let's <laughs> bring some additional black back into there. Um, and the burnt sienna will give you those little reddish tones if you want them in there, just a little bit more earthiness to it. So that looks pretty good in through there. I'm gonna bring a little bit more darkness down these sides to just fade into um, that greenish color. So just a little bit more black on my brush. Again, just to, create this illusion that this top part is under a little um, shadow of that overhang. So now I'm gonna start working in the window itself. So I'm gonna work from the back forward to the viewer, which means I gotta do anything that's inside that window first, and then I'll work my way up. So up in this top window, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black with water on my brush, and I'm gonna create this dark section in through here. So black plus water on my brush. And again, I'm just kind of watching what's happening in my photo without laboring over these enormous little nuanced details. I'm just taking it and saying, oh, there's a dark area. So I'm gonna emulate that in my, in my painting. And it's not a solid black area, it's got some light touches to it. So that's what I'm going to go do there. Down in this bottom section, I'm going to have a curtain. So I don't really need to do much there. Um, up in this top area, there's looks like like reflections of stuff. So I'm going to use um, black. I'm actually going to bring in a little bit of burnt sienna as well 
and a little bit of water and I'm just gonna kind of rub it in like this and again just looking at my photo and saying what what is what am I seeing in in there and there I don't even know what it is it's pro it might be a curtain it might be a light on it might be you know a variety of different things and I don't need to know necessarily what that is in order to paint it sometimes it's good to know what it is but if you're using a, a reference that you can't go and ask the person who took this picture what is that that I'm seeing and you can't really discern it yourself you can just kind of you know do something that represents just the shapes and things of that nature that will make it look a little bit more representational so up at the top I'm going to use some of my um, tan and my dark gray with a little bit of water on my brush it looks to be there's like a little curtain or something up in through here so this is tan plus my dark gray plus a little bit of water on my brush the water is going to help me to just kind of spread it around it's okay if you bump into your window frame at this point because it's going to um uh dark gray tan and water i was like what color combination am i in um bumping into your frame is okay because you're going to be um painting over that in a little bit and just kind of emulating some of these little color patterns and there it looks to be like a little I don't know reflection of something in the window so I'm just going to kind of tap in these little light marks of sorts just kind of coming across this window in through here uh, there's a couple little light marks in through here so again this is just tan plus gray dark gray on my brush just giving myself a couple of these little light marks that's looking pretty good maybe a little bit more of my burnt sienna over in this little section over in through here so that's looking pretty good for the top window i don't feel like i need to do much more than that once i put the stuff the uh frame on it'll be fantastic i'm gonna wash and dry my brush i'm gonna work on the list this little curtain so the curtain i don't want to go crazy with um because it could really take um, a lot of unnecessary time. I just want to give the illusion of a curtain that's kind of like doily-esque. So I'm going to take um, my, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of my dark gray plus water plus, plus white and water. So dark gray, white, and water. Water is going to be my my savior here and you could use the light gray but I think that that would be too light and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself um, a faint illusion of like uh, the the curtain kind of having um, little waves in it waves <laughs> that's not the right word ripples of sorts so something like this just bringing down these kind of lighter marks again this is dark gray white and water so this is just allowing for me to get these little bits of wrinkles in through here the water is what's going to help me to um, spread it around I'm going to do a couple more over in this corner I'm keeping it pretty dark right now and you'll see why in a minute I'm just getting myself um, the idea of where I want these um, little ripples to go and then we're going to put a little bit of um, decorative kind of pattern on it I definitely want it to be pretty dark up at the top just bringing some of these marks down in through here that's looking pretty good and then so that's looking pretty good so I've got a couple of ripples I don't really need a whole heck of a lot maybe maybe get it a little bit lighter down here at the bottom so this is just again just a little bit more of the um, dark gray and the water with a little bit of white just to kind of turn this tone a little bit lighter down at the bottom there we go that looks pretty good so now I'm going to improvise a pattern here I'm going to use um, my dark gray plus my tan so it looks almost like a little um, like creamy color but not my cream <laughs> but you could use your your beige I just want it to look a little bit different than here which is why I'm using that gray as well again you can use any color that you want and then you can have fun with the with the pattern here I'm gonna just kind of oh I need it a little bit lighter than that I'm gonna pick up um, a little bit of my light gray I wanted to definitely 
see it, um, but be cautious. <laughs> so then I'm going to just take this and I'm going to just really um, kind of improvise a, a fun pattern on here, like a doily-esque type of pattern. You can put, um, again, I'm using some good water with my with my um, mixture, you can have a lot of fun with kind of creating your own type of pattern if you wanted to, but wherever I have that ripple, like I had a little ripple here, I, I can get that part to kind of pop out a little bit more or go around that part of the curtain. Um, this curtain definitely is very busy um, for a pattern. You could certainly um, again, take the pattern and really emulate it 100% or you can improvise or don't do any pattern. So you can certainly have fun with the, the, um, um, the amount of detail that you want to put into it. I just am going to kind of show you a little of the basics and then once I've got a little bit of a pattern going, again, my pot is going to be right in the middle. So I'm not going to worry too much about in through there. Once I've got a little bit of a pattern, I can kind of take and do these cross type of marks that I'm seeing in the um, in the curtain. Again, I'm just improvising and um, looking to see what I have in that in the pattern of the um, of the curtain, but you don't need to go 100%. I, I, I see that there's little um, kind of cross stitchery in through there, so I'm just kind of going with those folds of the fabric, but again, you could make yours into whatever you want. And then I'm going to just kind of do maybe something similar over on this side. It's got to have something like this and like this. And w once you've got it done, if you feel that, you know, the pattern just wasn't for you. You didn't necessarily want to bring yours that far into the doily-esque kind of way. You can certainly just paint it back over with the with the gray, with the dark gray and, um, you know, start over from scratch and just make it into that um, a nice kind of soft type of um, pattern or just a flat sheer type of a curtain. That'll be totally up to you. I'm just kind of um, putting in a really loose interpretation of this type of, the type of pattern that I'm seeing. I'm gonna just kind of go across up and through here with this kind of waffle type of a pattern in through here and then just kind of carry it on both sides. Again, very, I'm going very loose with my, with my um, representation. You could have yours really tight, really loose, whatever you want. Um, maybe just pull a couple of these little decorative kind of marks up and through here. So it looks kind of similar. Looks fine by me. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be disguised by the, uh, by the uh, pot. I'm not concerned about that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, finish the wood frame part of this. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna and brown. Um, I don't know if I said I was going to use brown and your dark gray if you want to. And I'm going to, uh, and water. <laughs> Water's, water's going to be my, my savior here. And I'm going to just add a couple of little dark um, frame marks around here. This is going to help to uh, make that window frame look three-dimensional. So I'm just bringing down a couple of little like shadows of sorts. And you could really do this with any darker tone, um, darker than that cream type of a color. And you can see as I'm adding these, they just immediately add that three-dimensional aspect to it. I think I need a little one up and through here as well. And then maybe down this little side in through here and just maintain whatever side you do it on like up top that you do the same thing down in the bottom window so this one's got the frame the window frame itself uh attached down in through here and then that looks pretty good i'm going to put a little shadow down here and down here and again i've just made some kind of darker color with brown gray 
a little bit of burnt sienna. Again, it doesn't have to be the same color. It actually looks much better if you've got kind of a variety of shades. So it um, will help to sell the story of it being an old, dirty weather <laughs> type of window. So something like this. Uh, this piece right here sits in front of this one. So I'm going to put a little shadow right here, underneath here, like that. And I'm just going to kind of pull that down just a little bit. Um, I do need to put a brighter layer on that um, front piece, but I'm going to put a couple of little shadows down these sides too. So again, this is just some kind of darker grayish brown type of a color. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Just find your own rhythm. I'm going to put a little bit of it up here as the um, that dark green uh, would be again, or this top area would be shadowed anyways. And now I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up that original uh, beige color that we used for the window plus a little bit of white and give myself uh, its final coat on these exterior areas. So this is beige plus white in order to give myself a nice final coat of paint <laughs> on, the, on the window frame itself. And I'll put a little tiny um, hook on the window too, a little latch for it to close too in a second, but let me just kind of do this. I still have the little window sill to do too. So that's kind of, we're going to do that in a second here. And you can see as I'm doing this, I, I'm very carefree with the um, details that I put in it because I, I like to have fun painting. So as I'm painting, I'm saying, mm, there's tons of little teeny tiny details in that photo, but do, are they necessary? What, where can I edit this so I don't get hung up on the details? And that's something that takes time to kind of understand your visual preference as you're, as you're painting. Um, but for me, I discovered a long time ago that the pleasure of painting is much more important to me um, just for, for my own practice than all those little fine-tuned details. So as I paint, that's that's where I take it. I take it to that place that is comfortable and pleasurable for me as the as the artist. You can certainly take yours into whatever realm that you want and wherever you want to take it if you if you want to incorporate all those little fine-tuned detail like I'm seeing one detail that I do want to incorporate, which is little shadows underneath um, these pieces here. I'm going in for a little bit of dark gray and water. There's a little um, decorative kind of piece on each side of these that I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to incorporate that and then just shadow this down with a little bit of water. Whoops! There goes my brush. Hold on. <laughs> See? I have fun. My brushes go flying. <laughs> just shadow this down with a little bit of water underneath that. A little bit more water. There we go. And same thing over on this side. And then I just want a little... Um, little hook. I'm going uh, burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow I'd, and white. <laughs> I didn't say I was using yellow either. I'm just going to put a little kind of hook in through here and then I'm going to put little leaves and stuff right here. I'm going to pick up, I just washed my brush, picking up a little bit of black down on this bottom edge. Black with water on this bottom edge. And I'm going to, I've got water on my brush so I can see some of that gray through it. I'm just kind of rubbing that on. That'll give me that dark kind of rustic look on that edge. And then I'm going to use a dark gray, burnt sienna, and a little bit of white and water to give myself this um, like almost a dusty, dirty look to the top of this surface in through here. So this is my dark gray, burnt sienna, white, and some water. And again, I'm just kind of rubbing it on here. Brighter in the front is going to give me um, the illusion that it's closer to the viewer. It's sticking out more. I can put a little bit more brightness in through here. And that edge of the piece, this is like a piece of stone. It doesn't have to be super straight. That's why I'm leaving it kind of bumpy at that edge. Picking up a little bit more burnt sienna and my um, dark gray. 
and a little bit of water. <laughs> Just getting it to go a little bit darker as it goes back into that windowsill. And now I'm picking up dark gray and black. Just give myself just a little darker in through here. And again, you could certainly use a different kind of brush wherever your comfort zone is. I'm gonna pick up uh, a little bit of that same strange color combination just to give myself a little lightness here. And then I'm gonna put a couple of little leaves on it. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna and brown put a couple little leaves sticking on this surface here, maybe a couple little ones over in through here, like that. A little bit of white is now going on so we can see them a little bit better. Give myself a little edge in through there. And then once you've got this done, play with it as much as you want. I know I kind of fly through things um, just to demonst for demonstration purposes, but you can certainly fiddle with yours as much as you want. I might fiddle with mine a little bit more, but that's the general gist. And then we're gonna be using, uh, we're gonna use our, mm, we'll use the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the teapot. I'm gonna be using my small brush the colors that I'm gonna use are predominantly black, brown, and white, um, but if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna start out with a base of black. You could certainly draw this out. I'm gonna just give you some markers. We're gonna draw with our small brush and black paint. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my brush, thin out my black paint just a little bit so it's got more of like an ink consistency so I can draw some slender lines. I'm gonna give you some markers here. I'm gonna be in the center of my windowsill. I'm gonna come up almost halfway between the bottom and the um, framework in through there. Just give myself a little bit of a marker somewhere in through here. Then I'm gonna go up. Well, I should guess I should make it a little bit better than that. There we go. I'm gonna go up just above um, this area in through here, give myself another marker, something like that. And then I'm gonna go about almost halfway between there and uh, the top of that window uh, area, almost halfway, maybe a little bit shy of the halfway mark, something like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go, um, I would say right on this line right here, if you're in the middle, you're gonna go almost halfway between there and here. So somewhere about here, and then do the same thing on the other side. They don't have to be perfect. I think the pot is a little bit to the left anyways. And then I'm gonna connect here to here to here to here. I'm going to um, first kind of just bring this up just a little bit like that, just a little bit like that. And then I can connect this with kind of a curved line like that. And then a curved line like that. Don't worry if your lines aren't perfect yet. At the bottom, I'm going to Almost bring this, you could bring it straight down, but I think the photo has these guys coming in just a little bit, the sides of the pot. So I'm just gonna bring this in just a little bit, something like that. And then I'm gonna hit that bottom with a little bit of a curve. So from here, I'm gonna just take this and curve it just a little bit in through here. Maybe this side needs to come down just a little bit more like that. I should be having more water on my brush. It's not going nice and smoothly like I want it to. There we go. And then I'm gonna paint this whole section in with black paint. Just add in a little bit more moisture and black paint to my brush. Again, doesn't have to be anything perfect, just paint it on in. I, actually, I'm gonna recant that statement. <laughs> you don't want it to be super duper thick paint because we're gonna be hitting it with a couple of other details in a minute. So if it's super thick, it might take too long to dry. So just a thin coat of paint um, in this section right now will do you just fine. You can always add more paint um, later, but uh, the details that we're gonna be doing in a minute will take care of any un, um, unfinished spots. So again, I'm just going with kind of a thin coat in order to um, just fill in the space but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then if you do find that any of your um, outline 
isn't exactly as you had wanted and it's tough to correct, you can always hide it with a leaf. Um, we're gonna be putting some foliage inside the teapot in a minute, uh, so or in a future step. So just know if, if something doesn't go right, you can always hide it with leaves <laughs> or flowers or whatever you want. So that's looking pretty good for me there. I'm gonna put the handle on my teapot. So I'm gonna come outside, I would say somewhere in, um, uh, we're gonna go somewhere in this vicinity and then somewhere in this vicinity and then connect these guys with the handle and try not to have your hand shake. <laughs> my hand is, we got a shaky hand today. It seems like all, all, every time I go to do a painting with nice clean lines that that's gonna be a day where my hand decides to act up and, and shake. So I just brace myself and I embrace the imperfections whenever they, they occur. So that's looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and do another one over on the other side. And again, we, we're seeing this pot from an angle, so if it's, uh, if it's a little off symmetrical, that's all right, because we're seeing it from an angle. We'll blame it on that, and then we'll hide it with, with leaves. <laughs> that's looking good. I'm going to put my spout on now. So I'm going to have my spout coming right to this corner of the windowsill. It's going to, it's going to be uh, partially in the... Um, in the front of my teapot but right now I'm just gonna create like a little silhouette of it so we can have um, an easy time painting so just as my little spout in through here and then I'm gonna take this and connect it like that and then on this side I'm gonna take this and connect it like this and then I'm just gonna color this in with my black paint. And then once I've got this done, I'm gonna put um, some little details on it. I am gonna have a little area where there's gonna be um, the potting soil of sorts in through here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually pick up some of my dark gray so I can just kind of outline where I want these, um, these contours of the of the um, pot to go. So I'm gonna take this, um, coming down this corner just a little bit, maybe just a little bit higher, maybe about halfway between here and here, somewhere in through here, somewhere in through here. This is gonna be um, the front, um, I don't know, <laughs> contour, like something like this. And then I'm gonna put where if there was a lid on here, which there no longer is, it would be kind of somewhere in through here. So this is where the, or somewhere like this, it's gotta go inside the handles, right? Something like this and bring it around here. That's gonna be where our potting soil is gonna be inside there. So we don't really need to do anything too fancy there. I'm also gonna use this uh, dark gray to tell myself where I want the, where the where the spout enters the um, the pot. So I'm gonna give myself kind of this little curved line in through here. I'm gonna bring this up here and then just kind of pull this down in a little bit of a curved manner to give the illusion that this is in fact uh, the spout coming out of that area. I'm gonna use this gray to put a couple of little um, highlights on my handle like that. This side, I'm not gonna have much on that side. And then I'm also gonna use this dark gray to put a little bit of a highlight on the front part of my pot. So this is my dark gray. I'm gonna take it right in through here, put it like that, and then fade it out to the right and to the left. So I'm just letting myself kind of run out of paint. And if you have too much paint on your brush, you can always add a little bit of black. That will help you to, um, like I had a little bit too much in that area. So I just picked up a little bit more black on my brush. This is just giving you that cast iron type of a, of a look to it. Um, and a little bit brighter in through here will help you to establish that. And again, just the remnants on my brush right now, I'm just kind of rubbing into that black area. I'm now gonna amp up that high. Oh, I need a little bit of that gray on my spout as well. So I just picked up a little bit more of the gray just to give myself again 
a little start of a highlight on the spout. So somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit. I'm going with my beige color, that light creamy color, um, to start my super bright highlight with a little bit of water. So this is going to be an even more amped up kind of highlight right in through here like that and again you can make it go as bright as you want you could even i'm actually going to use a little bit of my burnt sienna too to give it a little bit more of that um kind of cast iron maybe there's a little bit of rust starting on it something like that and then a little bit of that beige is going to go on right in through here doesn't have to be right at the tippy top of the um spout you can, wherever you feel it's, it curves out the most, that's where you're going to put that brightest highlight. And again, I'm using just that beige window color right now just to make these pop a little bit more like that and then a little bit on this tip. And if the beige was too beigey for you, then <laughs> just go into that light gray. The, um, the light gray will most likely, I just added a little bit more black to it so it's not so light. The light gray will most likely look a little almost bluish when it's next to um, a warm light color like that beige. So that you could get a real nice shine appearance on this if you used um, just a black and white type of gray. This is a little bit too, there we go. Now it's shining and then you can fiddle. I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. I feel like I want to um, uh, fix this bottom a little bit. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of another lighter tone. I feel like this is a little askew, but it could be my angle that I'm standing at over here. Um, but once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want. Again, you don't really have to do much up here. Um, you could stick a little of the if you feel like you wanted a little bit more contour in through here, just a little bit more of that light gray, a little bit more light gray or gray, some sort of gray in that front to pop it out a little bit more. And then you just fiddle with those tones. If you want it brighter, if you want it shinier, you can certainly add brighter things to it. But I'm thinking that mine's looking pretty good. So I'm going to call it. <laughs> I'm going to be using my small and my medium brush for the next step. I just picked up a little bit of burnt sand too. Um, so you can finish your pot, your teapot, put this small brush away, take out uh, your, or wash this small brush, take out your medium and your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish all of our foliage. This will be the little stuff that's in the pot as well as the leaves and stuff down here. I'm using my small and my medium brush and I'm gonna be using probably all of my colors. I will call them out as I use them. So I'm definitely gonna be using white, yellow, green, both shades of green, black, burnt sienna, brown, and I don't know about my tans and my grays, but if I use them, I'll, I'll call them out. So what I'm gonna first do is put a whole bunch of little sticks and stuff in between stems and sticks and stuff. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and black and water on my brush, and I'm gonna start putting in a whole bunch of fun sticks and stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna have little guys kind of popping out over here. I'm gonna have some up in through here. I'm gonna have them in front and behind the, um, the pot itself. You can, again, this is one of those times where you improv. If you want to have a ton, make a ton. These are just going to be the little pieces that you're going to see outside or they're going to help steer you into where you want all of your um, little leaves and stuff. This depiction here is kind of almost like an ivy type of leaf that kind of looks like it could start growing on something if um, if there was a pole or something. So I'm going to have these, you know, a couple of longer ones that are going to show. I'm going to now pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna on my dirty brush and just put maybe a couple of little leaves and stuff in through here, maybe a little bit hanging out, maybe a couple on this guy in through here. 
Um, do I want any more burnt sienna in through there? Nope, I think that's good. <laughs> I feel like I want this little guy to have more on it. Um, so that's looking, and again, you don't have to do much. That's just gonna be the start of it. I'm gonna now put some of those down below. So again, black and brown, little bit of water on my brush. This could be also a time where you take something like this, these guys that you already started, and you could pull a dark stem going down the center of them. Or you could add these little kind of, um, branches of sorts coming out wherever you want them to be. The the smaller the brush, the more delicate the little marks you're going to make. You could make these, um, you know, really even just smaller pieces of leaves if you wanted to. I'm using a really small brush right now, so if I wanted to have, um, you know, little tiny leaves represented right now, that would be a great time to use this brush to do that. But I'm looking more towards like getting these little, uh, almost like branched kind of pieces of grass just to kind of um, appear in between some of these leaves. And to me, those are the, the little kind of details that will make it look a little bit more realistic when you've got those stems and sticks and um, you know, different textural type of elements. So we're going to have lots of the uh, almost like teardrop leaves kind of uh, uh, being displayed everywhere and these sticks that kind of just uh, appear poking through every now and again or the stems that just kind of appear poking through every now and again are one of those elements that just makes it look a little bit more realistic. Again, just uh, watching those... Um, little characteristics of the thing that I'm trying to, to trying to depict. I'm seeing little sticks and stuff all poking through some of these these leaves. So I'm just going ahead and, and incorporating some of that so I can have a pretty solid representation of um, of that photograph. And also while I've got this dark color on my brush, if there's any little areas that I feel could use a couple more little dark pops anywhere, I can just kind of wiggle my brush a little bit, give myself a couple of little deep shadowy type of areas in throughout um, these these areas. So now that that's all set, I think I'm gonna switch brushes to my medium brush to get some of these leaves taken care of. I'm gonna start up top. Um, I'm gonna to be working with a whole bunch of different shades of green, but the first one that I'm gonna go for is, um, we'll call it kind of like an olive green color, which I've pre-mixed on my palette here. How I got to that was I used green oxide, yellow, and burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna, or you could use brown, um, whatever works for you to get this kind of like an olive green type of a color. I'm gonna use this as a base for the um, little leaves up in uh, the top pot up in through here. And I think another trick, if you wanna call it a trick, <laughs> to making things look a, a little bit more realistic is to not make the make it look consistent um, with one solid color. So I'm using this color. I'm going to also use it down below in some various areas, but I'm not going to use it as the only color of green or the only base tone that I'm going to use up here. I'm going to, in a second, use a different shade of green to incorporate more stuff up there, but that's where I'm going to start maybe a little bit in through here as well. Um, so I've got this olive green type of a color. This is going to be great on my light areas. So I'm going to use this where we put that light green color earlier. I'm going to use that as a, another tone going into, um, into those leaves. So something like this. And this is where I can start to kind of um, make a little bit more of um, definitive kind of leaf looking pieces. But again, I'm not, I'm looking more for like a color pattern than I am um, fine tuned detail on these. I can also use this same um, olive green color on top of these darker ones. Because it's darker, it's going to look different than when I'm using it on the lighter ones. So just pop it in every now and again because you've got those different color bases underneath it, it will emulate as a different 
tone or shade. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go back up top. I'm going to uh, use this um, olive green plus a little bit of white and maybe a little bit of green oxide. So this is going to make just kind of like a more muted, lighter green tone, which I think is going to look pretty as another uh, another tone on these guys up and through here. And again, these are leaves as opposed to um, flowers, but if you wanted to, to make some flowers, feel free to do so. It's, again, it's your, it's your teapot, window teapot. You can make it look whatever way you want. These front ones might be coming out in the sun a little bit more than those ones um, up underneath the uh, window in through there. So I think I'm going to pop a little bit more brightness on these guys in through here. I'm now going to, um, do I want this color elsewhere? Hmm, I think I do. I think I want it on some of these guys. Maybe, maybe a little bit everywhere. I'm digging it. So I'm going to use a little bit of this lighter green tone, especially on some of these front ones. And you can see as I go into the lighter tones, like right now I can just kind of um, pop these little marks in through here. Again, I like to do it in like little clusters. I'm I, I'm watching my picture, but I'm my photograph, but I know that I could get really lost in the details of it. So I'm um, trying to control myself and not um, overdo it. Just let let the freedom of painting, you know, take take me and hope by the time I'm done, hopefully I've got something that's very representational of the photograph, but again, I didn't lose myself in, in all of those details. So that looks pretty good. I'm now going to, I'm not going to wash my brush. I want to go for a nice light kind of yellowy color. So yellow, white, and those dirty remnants that were on my brush. So maybe more white in through here, just a real pale yellow-ish green is what I'm going for right now. I might actually, I'm going to switch to my small brush. I want to do these little guys up here, but I'm feeling like this big brush is, or the medium brush is a little bit too big. So I'm going for this very light yellowy green, and I'm just going to kind of pop a couple little polka dots on some of these leaves, just to, on a couple of those brighter ones, just to emulate little highlights on some of these, like that little um, kind of ivy type of, leaf that has some light spots and dark spots to it, you could certainly go again, fine tune detail on this and make it um, really bright. I'm actually going to go for some of my tan. I didn't think I was going to use it, but I think it would be a nice highlight on some of these um, ones up in through here. So tan plus that olive green will give me a nice soft highlight for these guys up in through here without um, bringing them as bright as these guys. And that's another thing, just fiddling with those other tones that you had previously used. They can make for great highlights. They can make for great shadows if in the right area. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to, I want to work on these back ones in through here. So I've got my um, light greenish yellow that's on my brush. I'm actually going to use that with some of my dark custom green. So this is going to give me just a varying tone of that. And I'm going to just pop it on some of the, oh, I need a little bit lighter than that. I'm going to just kind of pop it on just little, little marks in these guys. That's going to give me an extra tone on those. Maybe a couple in through here. And again, you don't have to do a, a whole heck of a lot in order to sell the story of dimensional elements, especially when you're when you're working on foliage, um, it's just a matter of getting those areas to pop as much as you want. I definitely want to have some really bright ones in the front. So I'm actually going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up, I'm, I'm going to make just light yellow. So I've got um, yellow plus white. So this is going to be a really pale um, yellow, yellow color. And this is going to help to make some of these front leaves really pop out. So I'm going to take this and give myself a couple of, where do I want to do this? Maybe, maybe somewhere in through here. And again, I'm just going for a representation of what I'm seeing 
in the um, in the photograph, you can always again add more darkness, more lightness, but trying to get that <clears throat> that initial kind of footprint similar to what you're seeing in that photo can be, especially when you're working on a foliage that has so many different tones, so many different um, aspects to it, it can be quite challenging. Um, but if you can kind of keep your mind uh, focused on, on the task, <laughs> on seeing certain colors, then on seeing certain um, commonalities in the shapes, that can help you kind of work your way through it. I, again, I'm not going to do this perfect. I'm not. I'm picking up my olive green plus that light yellow I just did. Um, it's never going to be every single leaf in the same exact place, but getting these you know varying tones will will help feed my painterly eye. Anyways, I'm going to um, now use a little bit of my burnt sienna. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I feel like I want to add a little kind of orangey tone in here. So I've got burnt sienna plus a little bit of yellow. It's going to give me a little bit of an orangey tone. I seem to be running out of burnt sienna on my palette too, but that's all right. So I'm going to pop in a couple. Oh, I might need a little bit of white first. I just picked up a little bit of white. I'm going to pop in some um, little white leaves that I want to um, put some burnt sienna on in a minute, but I know if I don't have a lighter base in through here, um, the burnt sienna is going to just take on all the color behind it. So I'm going, I'm right now, I'm just popping in some white leaves. <laughs> You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. It's going to turn, once I put that burnt sienna on, on them in a minute, it'll, it'll make more sense. <laughs> so I've got maybe a bigger one in through here. And again, these are just the tricks that, that I'm familiar with. I know that my burnt sienna is um, very transparent. So as I go through these processes, <laughs> I know that if I was to just put burnt sienna on here, I'm, you know, I'm going to run into a, oh, hey, you can't see that. <laughs> so I just do that instead. Um, in through here, I think I want to, while that those white ones are drying, I'm picking up a little bit more black paint. I feel like I want this to have a little bit more dimension to it. So I'm popping in a little bit more darkness in through here just to give myself, I wanted this a little bit larger of an area and it's a little bit too narrow of an area right now. Uh, picking up some more of my dark green. So now I'm just, and my uh, oh, um, green oxide, just kind of fiddling right now with the different tones and giving myself, um, making sure I've got enough leaves where, where I want them to be. I will add those little um, burnt sienna ones in a minute, just kind of putting my head back in through here, seeing I think I want a little bit of green oxide on this guy in through here. So right now I'm just fiddling. I'm fiddling while I'm waiting for those um, white ones to dry, giving myself a little bit of extra um, leaves here and there. So I'm going back and forth between my green oxide black and my dark green, fill in some of these little spots. Again, nothing too, too fancy, just making it look to me nice and filled in. Um, now I think I'm going to go into my, into the burnt sienna. I feel like I do want to um, kind of add a little bit to um, the white ones, but also some of these green ones as well. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to make my painterly eye happy. So here we go. We're popping in some of that burnt sienna on top of some of these white ones, and again, it's adding that extra dimension of um, like an orangey tone. I just picked up burnt sienna and yellow. So this is going to give me like a little bit more orangey and you can have fun with this. Again, you could make these into little flowers if you wanted them to be. You could make them into more autumn leaves if you wanted them to be. So feel free to make it your own and then fiddle with it as much as you want. Um, I might fiddle with mine a little bit more, but I'm picking up a little bit of white right now. But once you've got it in a nice resting place that is comfortable to your eye, we have one little step left to go and it's going to be with um, with the small brush. So you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step.
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one with black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see that, are you? Changing colors. <laughs> I'm gonna go light, light yellow is where I'm going with this one. So I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date, or you could use a symbol, whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it is, a, it is your painting and you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very pretty, I feel like it's like a European type of rustic building in a teapot. <laughs> I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.